1500 GMT and we continue with breaking news this hour. Israel's parliament has voted and approved to change a crucial aspect of the country's judicial system. The new law will limit the power of Supreme Court judges. The controversial plan has led to mass protests. Tens of thousands of Israelis blocked roads outside the Knesset to demonstrate against the bill. Rallies have been held since January when the proposed amendments were announced. Critics say the bill is a threat to democracy. In a moment, we'll speak to Bernard Smith in Tel Aviv. But first, let's go live to Laura Khan. She's joining us live um, from West Jerusalem. Tell us what's happening there, Laura. OK, I'll just let you know where I am. I'm around 200 metres away from the Supreme Court and also the Israeli Knesset, where the reasonableness bill was passed today. Uh, I've been speaking to numerous people in, from the tens of thousands of people behind me in the protests. People, of course, are angry. They're hurt. They've been out protesting for months, not only against this bill, but also the full judicial overhaul, which was put on ice just a few months ago. And many just didn't expect this to go through. They certainly didn't want it. So I just want to give you a sense of what's happening behind me. This is a sea of blue and white Israeli flags. People have been out here in the blistering heat for many hours. Uh, the head of the movement has actually put in one minute after the, after the reasonableness bill was passed, he put in a complaint to the Supreme Court about this bill. But it puts them in a bit of a catch-22 situation because the Supreme Court could reject the bill, but because of the new bill, they also can't. So it creates a bit of a constitutional crisis. Now, here to join me, I actually have a member of the reservists uh, who's been one of the uh, leaders of the protest. So thank you so much for joining us. Hello. Can you just tell me, there are 10,000 reservists who said they will not turn up to work if this bill is passed. Yep. Are you one of those? Will you not turn up to work? I'm one of those who also volunteer. But um, personal, everyone here, this amazing people behind me, we the people, we have a personal uh, story. My story is I'm also a disabled veteran, so I volunteer in other things. And uh, but the mind, the general mindset, of course, is that this minister, this uh, government of destruction, are breaking the fundamental contract between the country and the model of our IDF, which is the people's army, an army by the people for the people. And therefore, of course, we want that for volunteer. Uh, to, we want volunteer to defend any country, it's not about any political um, discussion, it's not about right and left, it's about right and wrong. Mm -hmm. And uh, ask people uh, that swear off only to the values embedded in the Declaration of Independence, that we believe in freedom, civil rights, justice and equality. When this contract is being broken, we won't serve the, the country. Easy. So is this going to affect the stability and security of a country that identifies itself as an incredibly secure country, that where the military is one of the most important aspects yeah, of it. Brilliant question. We are not being interviewed to a channel known as Al Jazeera. So we, I guess that many of the public that watching us right now are from Arabic countries, and they're very much curious about the fact that Israel is a pivotal uh, country in the Middle East because of the strength of the high-tech free economy uh, the IDF is, is of course, um, is, is part of this great innovation that, that us Israelis have. And the problem is that the government, current government of destruction in Israel, destroying the strength of Israel. So, of course, the consequences for that are very much relevant for our international relationship with Arab nations. Um, and we're here to stop the madness. Israel has to, st to stay a very strong a major role player in the Middle East and part of the global arena. So if from my perspective, yes, it's a very emotional point, but we believe that it's us, the patriots of Israel, we back again at the front line to secure our beloved country and make sure that Israel will remain uh, a strong nation in the Middle East. Yiftek thank you so much for joining us. Uh, back to you, Nastasia. All right, Laura, thank you for that. That is uh, Laura Khan live for us in West Jerusalem. Let's go now to another correspondent, Bernard Smith. And Bernard, tell us uh, where you are and what's happening there. 
So this is central uh, Tel Aviv, Liv, where, Liz, where about an hour or so ago, not long after uh, Parliament ratified that law, people came out spontaneously, spontaneously to protest. The police have shut off access to a main highway because in previous protests here, protests have gone down there to shut off sort of a main arterial road through the city. They're not going to be able to do that this evening. There's a heavy police presence. But for 29 con weeks consecutively, protesters have been gathering in Tel Aviv against this judicial overhaul. It hasn't got them anywhere. The law has been passed and there is an enormous frustration here uh, that this has happened, but people have come out spontaneously to protest. All right, Bernard. I believe it was uh, on Sunday, yesterday, that we saw people coming out in support of these changes too. Are there any rallies taking place now in support of the bill that's been passed? So you've got two types of... Uh, you've got pro-reform protesters and anti-reform protesters. Now, what you have here are people who are against the reform, protesting for 29 weeks consecutively. They tend to come... They tend to believe that Israel, which was founded by generally Jews of European origin, origin was founded as a secular state for the Jewish people, but as a secular state, they believe that that is under threat, has been threatened by this overhaul. But what's happened, perhaps in at least the last 10 years or so, is Israel has moved further to the right. This is more of a liberal island in what is a more conservative country. And the, the further right, the more conservative people, which gen, gen, generally tend to be ultra-Orthodox Jews, more conservative Jews, generally of Middle Eastern origin, they believe that, they're demo, that they have democratically voted for these changes, that their democratic wish is being uh, uh, stopped by the Supreme Court, and they have been out pre protesting previously. They aren't out today, they've got their way, essentially, but there have been other protests, less of them, though, in favour of these reforms. All right, Bernard, thank you very much for that. That is Bernard Smith bringing us the latest from Tel Aviv. Thank you. Well, let's take a closer look at what's been passed, which is just one part of the government's plan to change the legal system. The Knesset has passed a law preventing judges from striking down government decisions on the basis that they are unreasonable. Israel has no written constitution, but the principle has been interpreted by scholars to allow judges to review political decisions based on public interest. Critics of the new law say reasonableness has been an essential check and balance on the executive branch of government, but supporters of the legislation say the reasonable standard is too subjective and that it interferes with decisions made by elected officials. Well, let's bring in Marwan Bishara. He's Al Jazeera's senior political analyst and he's joining us live from Paris. Lots to talk about here, Marwan. I want to start with one thing that you've been watching very closely and that's how police have behaved with protesters throughout the year. There's been a notable... Well, there's a lack of violence, isn't there? And is it notable, do you think, given the size and the duration of these protests? <laughs> You know, on the one hand, it's, I must say, it's to their credit, right? Six months of protest, six months of flooding the streets. And uh, week after week, we see tens, hundreds of thousands of Israelis. And the last day or two, we've seen opposing uh, sides in the streets, uh, in the streets of Jerusalem, uh, right? Thousands of opposing camps uh, protesting. And we see the Israeli security really, even though they would use some, uh, you know, water hose and whatever, but in the end of the day, the degree of violence is so low that really makes one wonder two things. First of all, why, when, uh, say, for example, in 2021, when few Palestinians in Israel, citizens of Israel, went out and protested in, in Haifa and Jaffa and, and other places, so much force, so much violence was used against them, even pogroms in the likes of Jaffa and so on and so forth, while against hundreds of thousands of Israeli Jewish protesters, there's hardly any violence by the security forces. And there's hardly any violence among the protesters. My analysis is the following. Back in March, if you remember, and perhaps it's good to remind our viewers around the world, Prime Minister Netanyahu started speaking of anarchy. Mm -hmm. when there were the, the first signs of violence in Tel Aviv after protests following the firing of the police chief in the city by the uh, security minister 
uh, Itmar Ben Gvir because of his political positions, right? Since then, there were some violence, there were few arrests, like a dozen arrests in Tel Aviv, and suddenly the entire country was paralyzed by fear that this could, in fact, go out of hand. So since, since March, and even today, we've seen very soft handling of the, the protest. Yeah. Because, again, my analysis is, with the first casualty, especially between the camps, I think the country is going down to its dark side. I think we're going to see, and on, you know, a fire in the country. Yeah, and on that, Marwan, when you look at the size of the protests and how much this judicial overhaul has divided the country, you're right, we've seen, we haven't seen much violence between police and protesters, but does it feel like a moment of reckoning for the country when you see just how divided it is and what's at stake here? Absolutely. And, and look, uh, uh, you know, the Israeli security services, the Shin Beit and Shabak and all of that, they've been looking at, uh, you know, the social media of the radical groups within the country. You know, a group like La Familia, right? I mean, the name is already invokes, uh, you know, certain mafiosi type approach by some fanatical right wing groups that follow the Minister of Security, Itmar Ben Gvir, something like the Jewish Defense League, in their social media uh, in encounters that are been viewed by some journalists and by the uh, security services, there has been calls to use guns and knives and, and so on and so forth against protesters. Just again, to remind our viewers around the world, those two fanatical ministers that we have today in Israel, like, for example, the Minister of Finance, he was arrested. He was kept for three weeks by the security services for attempting a plot of arson in Tel Aviv. So you have these very dangerous elements, both in power and in the streets. Yeah. And any one of them carrying any major violent attack against the opposing groups or against any part of the city or the country, I think will lead to a major escalation that I don't think even the security services will be able to stop. Because let's all remember, a big part of this country is armed to the teeth, and all of them have served in the military. And certainly, when violence take off in a place like Israel, it can really take off. It is certainly a worrying situation. And one that we are watching very closely. That is our senior political analyst, Marwan Bishara, live in Paris. Thank you, Marwan.